Okay, today we're going to install this battery cutoff switch, and you know that I am uh, really you know, a proponent of battery cutoff switches. And uh, it's a, going to be a digital switch. It's going to be a switch that when you turn it on, it tells you exactly how much battery power you still have, okay, how much of a charge you still have, which I think is going to be handy, but it's also going to be handy in another way because at a glance, I can tell if my battery's on or not. One of the things we do we, uh, each time we put the car in gear, or before we put the car in gear, we do a walk around like it was an airplane. Do a pre-flight check on everything. Is everything turned off or on or whatever it's supposed to be? One of the things we check, especially after parking it, is is the battery off, okay? And uh, this one now, well, there's been a couple times where we've come back and we've gone, ah, oh, shoot, we left the battery off. That's happened. Um, that's gonna be a harder thing to do to happen when we have a light on whenever the battery's on. So that's gonna be helpful, I think, in a lot of ways. So we're gonna be doing that. Now, before we kick this thing off and do it, there's a couple things I want to, a correction I need to make, and I'm gonna do it now instead of waiting till the end of the video. One is, um, I installed this thing just fine, worked great, but you didn't see me installing the um, rubber gasket that goes on the outside of the switch between the switch and the uh, battery. Of course I put that in. It's an important thing to have, but I just didn't happen to show that part. We didn't film that part, okay? Uh, and then the other thing, though, is I installed this the same way I installed our regular little red switch we used to have, and that is with the uh, bolts pointing outward and leaving the small smooth heads of those bolts inside with a little piece of masonite to protect the battery case itself. Um, that's a good idea and it worked great with those other ones but honestly with this one I did it that way this time too. I put it in, put them in that way, put the a piece of masonite in there and all that type of stuff. With this one if I had it to do all over again I think what I would do is I would put the bolts in from the outside just like you're supposed to and then take a hacksaw or whatever and cut those bolts off so they're not sticking through the the box here over half an inch and going to rub the uh, batteries even though I've got a board in there to protect them but um, I think I would if I had to do it all over again I would just do it that way I would put them in from the outside it's just a lot easier to get them tight if you do it that way so do it that way, and then it's nothing to take a hacksaw and take those things off, okay? All right, well, military tunes are flying over, so I guess that's time for us to take a break. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Always, always, if you think someone might like this, please share it with them. They'll appreciate it, and we'll appreciate it. Okay, well, hey, here we are on a beautiful mid-September day, a Saturday, uh, and we're not out camping. So what does that mean? Well, we're working on the camp or we're doing something. And we've got something fun we're going to try to do today, something we're going to try to install. And it's kind of weird um, that I'm doing this. Uh, what I'm going to be installing, of course, is a, um, a battery cutoff switch, power switch. Now, I made a video about this a couple of years ago and talked about the benefits of having a power battery cutoff switch on your RV because of several reasons. One, of course, is that you don't want your battery to completely discharge down to nothing. That's destructive. It's really bad for your battery. And that can cause a problem where you're out camping and now suddenly you need a new battery, which is both expensive and inconvenient. Uh, the other reason why I'm going to be doing this is because someone sent me a uh, product that they wanted us to try out. And this is a power switch or battery switch that also comes with a readout display right here on the switch itself. Now you can install this two different ways. Uh, one way has it so that the uh, power that you have remaining on your battery is always displayed. And then the other way, of course, is it only displays how much power you have on your battery when uh, you turn it on. I'm not going to hook it up where it's always, uh, you know, showing the power in my battery because that then makes it one of those vampire de devices that's draining your battery. Now, there are lots of things in your RV, even though you think you might turn them off, that are, oh, I don't know, maybe you've got a 
some type of transformer plugged in for charging something or the, the, the lights on your microwave or even your television has a little bit of power that it uses all the time to keep its programming and stuff like that. And so these are commonly referred to as vampire devices because they slowly uh, suck the life right out of your battery. Okay, but today what we're going to do is we're going to put this thing in installed here uh, and change it all out and see how it goes and see if it works as well as they advertise that it does and I think this is going to be a fairly easy straightforward installation take one off put the other one on they seem to be about the same size hopefully and um, like I said you can wire it up where uh, it displays it all the time but I'm not going to do that because like I said that uses power but also I can then, if it's only on saying what the charge is, what percentage the, this thing is charged, that is telling me whether or not my battery switch is on at a glance. I don't have to bend down here and go, okay, oh, is this on? Or do I need to move that? How do I, how do, I do that? You know, and, uh, and to make sure it's on, this thing will tell me at a glance that the light is on, the, uh, uh, the, the batteries are on. Okay, so I think that's going to be handy. Two handy things. One, having something that tells you how much battery power you have left and two a light that tells you when the battery switch is on so I'm excited about both of those things but let's see how hard it is to uh, install so let's go ahead get to work on it first thing we need to do of course is disconnect that, uh, that negative power cable got to open all this up okay all right let's go all right batteries disconnected and the batteries are out now why did I have to take the battery out? Well, it's because I installed this one from the inside here. You might also notice that I took a piece of uh, plywood or masonite right there and put a little barrier there so that these screws here, no matter how you put them in, won't rub a hole in the, uh, uh, in the battery. So there we go. And now it's time to uh, take, this, uh, take this switch off. Okay, uh, it wasn't it wasn't real easy to take off, but it wasn't really hard. Uh, we got the uh, the old one off, and I'm going to put the new one on, and I think that's going to happen pretty quickly. Let's see. Okay, well this is going to go right on here. It doesn't look very uh, difficult at all, simply because by good fortune, the uh, distances between uh, you know here and here and here and here and here are the same. So I don't have to drill any new holes or anything like that. That's going to be great. All right, one of the things that the instructions cautioned me about was when you're putting it on make sure that you've got the on off or that is to say the on is top center that way when you have it on you'll be able to read the uh, display here if you just happen to mount it this way it will still work just fine but the display will be sideways so make sure you have it mounted so that the green on is on the top so you can read the display Okay, if your situation is like mine, uh, there's two things I want to point out. One is I have a 12-inch cable here that I purchased to put in this system, okay? 12 inches is really not quite long enough. Unfortunately, when I went to O'Reilly's, I mean, they come in like 8 inches, 12 inches, and then like 20 or 24 inches. They just jump right from that. A 16 would probably be better 16 or 18 if I had it do all over again I would use a 16 or 18 on these things to connect them better all right the other thing that I want to show you is this little connection right here requires its own kind of dedicated negative ground all right this thing won't work unless that negative ground is taken care of and in my situation what I did was I made me a little designated cable to go there and then go back over to the to the battery easy enough to do they actually supply you with uh like these ring connectors like this and so you can make one yourself or you can use 
something else that you have in all this wires probably to connect to that but the main thing is your positive is interrupted here and all the positive things have to be there and then there has to be a um, uh, a negative here for this device in order for it to work okay all right let's get back to putting this thing together All right, when you're putting this thing together, getting this all balanced in there, getting this hooked up, and then you're going to connect it to the, the box here. Every time I would get everything just about done or I'd get everything fixed up, one of these little, I don't know, walls right here would just fall out because it's kind of a balancing act and you're pushing on them, things like that. So I just took a little bit of duct tape, stuck it on there. I'll peel that off later. Now, I have a choice. See how these... Uh, uh, holes here have the uh, hexagonal ends on them like that that's so the uh, the nuts that go in there uh, will tighten down okay um, but that doesn't really work when that part's going to be hidden no matter how I do it now I have a choice here I can either put these things through here like this They'll come out the back side and come out the uh, in, inside of my uh, battery box here. Or I can connect the whole thing this way to the uh, side of my battery box. That is to say, put these in, in here and come out that way. I'm going to do it that way because I'm scared to death that if these um, bolts here go through here and they're going through they're going to stick out about that much and that's going to poke or rub a hole in my battery okay now i have a piece of masonite somewhere here that i put inside here to protect the battery from these bolts or the nuts but i still think that if it gets too wet, then it's going to, uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, if it gets too wet or anything like this, it's going to start to crumble. And the next thing you know, I've got a hole in my battery. We don't want that. So even though I'm going to have this here, I am going to mount this thing through this way. Does that make sense? I hope so. If you look down inside here, you'll see how I've got one that's going in through this way and coming out and it has just a little bitty head on it whereas the one that goes in there has a half inch or better of the bolt sticking out like i said i'm afraid that that's going to end up wearing a hole even in that piece of masonite that i have there and poking a hole in my battery which is a bad thing so if you don't have a piece of wood or something like that in there you definitely need to figure out how you're going to make sure that these things don't poke a hole in your battery probably with that soft nut that's on the back side like that it's not going to be a problem but I'm not going to do that I am definitely going to mount mine coming in from the inside and therefore not uh, sticking out so much as to potentially damage my battery Yes, I admit that this this is kind of tricky to get that uh, nut started on that bolt right there with your fingers down in there and stuff like that. But I think it's worth it to not, you know, poke a hole in your battery. Notice I could use a uh, Allen wrench. I've got one here like this, and I could uh, hold that there like that, and I could then tighten with say my socket set like so, or which isn't a bad way to do it or I made me a little Allen wrench tool by using <laughs> by using a uh, 6.5 millimeter uh, socket and then put one of those little wrenches in there like that and now I can use that to uh, tighten Allen wrench stuff I kind of really like doing that but either way it works hmm? pretty cool huh I made me an Allen wrench, socket wrench. <laughs> I 
as you can see, this 12 inch red cable that I have here, positive cable, just barely, I have to force it, bend it over to make it hit that to post. Uh, 16 inches would be better, but they're just hard to find. But I made it work. Okay, here it is installed. You see it looks pretty good. That 12 inch uh, cable that I put right there, that wire, works just barely, but does work. Look how good that looks. And when we turn it on, look what happens. How cool is that? So we're real happy about this. We're glad that the people who make this thing uh, sent us this thing uh, and to, to try it out. I think we're going to uh, appreciate it down the road. And uh, there will be a, uh, a link, of course, in the comments.